What's up, everybody? This is Tu. I'm with Ping, and our guest today. I'll let her introduce herself here in a minute. But we're happy that you guys are here with us for the No Eggs Podcast. What do we call this again? And this is no the K-Podcast. No K-Podcast. Podcast. There we That's go. Correct. That's yeah. the translation. Um, so, Danny, I will let you introduce yourself. Uh, hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Danny, and I don't know. I just. That's it. Where are you from? <laughs> where where yeah. do you reside? What do you do in your day to day? And then we'll pick up because we have topics yeah. that we want to discuss okay, as well. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, I, I suck at introducing myself because I'm like, it's I don't know. It's so good. It's not every How day you, you sit in front of a microphone and yeah, you have to speak. Yeah, right? Um, yeah, so actually I am from Minnesota now. I just moved here last year, but originally I'm from Merced, California, yeah. you know, represent my Central Valley. Which is no- up north, right? Nor- Northern California? Um, I say it's the armpit of California okay. because you know where it bends. It's like okay. right there in the middle. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah no, so that's okay. where. Yeah. Okay. That's that's exactly <laughs> where it is. And yeah. so when you you think of California, yeah. Um, so it's south of Sacramento. Okay. You know, another large Hmong community, and then north of Fresno. Yeah. So it's right okay. in between. Yeah. But born and raised. Like a, born and raised. Born and raised. Yeah. There's a big community in Merced. I mean, like, the, I, I will tell you the first time that I went to the Fresno New Year years ago, I went there when I was like 22, 23. Um, I was so amazed because when you come, when you go to the July 4 here in St. Yeah. Paul, right, you see tons of people that you don't know, but you feel like you, you've you seen them before, right? You're like, I don't yeah. know if I know that guy, but I feel like I haven't seen him. But when you go to Fresno, you're like, okay, I know for sure I haven't seen these Hmong people yet, but it's yeah. just as many. And... Uh, I mean, it's really cool. It's uh, our community is truly large, and and that's something that we get to highlight today because, uh, in a lot of ways, you you represent the Mon community in many ways in what in the things that you do, and so we'll talk about yeah. that uh, because you do have a big representation as far as what you do here, and I think all of us have had a small role as well in like yeah. shaping a piece of the Mon community from your angles no, yeah. not yeah. for the better or for worse yeah. but we've done some things where it's come up into like uh, a, a bigger eye where more people yeah. have had yeah. eyes on you yeah um so definitely you definitely yeah. you. yeah i mean first, that's just hey, happenstance first, did you know he was the first uh saint paul firefighter for for yeah first yeah. Yeah. No first way. Hmong firefighter first Hmong, in the city yeah, of saint yeah, paul sorry, yeah. the wow. largest Hmong community in First one, I, I always joke, first one to be hired on the fire department for yeah. St. Paul, that's Hmong, and the first Hmong guy to also quit the department. Yeah. <laughs> was everyone so else fired? Yeah, so, no, not oh, fired, okay. volunteered. So are there more Hmong firefighters yes, so, now? Okay. Yes, so... It's quite a bit now, wow, right? Look at uh, that. Yeah, so James since... James' little brother? Uh, uh, well, he's actually for Brooklyn Center, I believe, okay. or Brooklyn Fire. Yeah. But St. Paul he's itself... He's a stud, man. That boy have, is fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we Sorry. have about four or five uh, Hmong firefighters now and okay. uh, that are Hmong. And so, like, some people will always say to me, like, hey, you're the one that kind of paved the way. And although I don't look at it that way, um, it's true that somebody, no matter which industry you look at it, uh, there's always needs to be one that, like, opens that road, right? And if I had the awareness and the knowledge to say I was the first one to do it for the sake of being the first one, that'd be one thing. Mm-hmm. But most of us, we do things just because we want to do them, and then we end up in a place where maybe you are the first, and it's not, that was never your intention. So the clout that comes with it, that's much more the news media that wants to paint a, yeah. a narrative of what yeah. they want to show for perhaps their own ratings. But um, I'm happy it's that it's a big it, deal. Yeah, no, but I'm happy that it, I'm it happy that somebody yeah, did yeah, it, and yeah. I'm happy that now there's more Hmong firefighters, right? Yeah. Yeah. For the city of St. Paul, yeah, it's so, a big deal, and that's yeah. huge. And it just is. like you, you're the Hmong far, Hmong bee farmer, and then you. So let's talk about you because <laughs> yes, you're yes, our guest you're here. Our let's, guest. We're talking with each other. No, here. and yeah. I love yeah. it. I love hearing about all of this. So yeah, and so. So let's talk about what, what were some of the things we want to at least cover um, yeah, the so modeling we, side of this, right? Yes. That's one thing we definitely <laughs> want to talk about. Yeah, so tell us. Uh, because tell us Danny about is here because yep. Danny is among <laughs> Minnesota, uh, Miss Minnesota. Global. Okay. And yeah. so let's let's go into that. Let's dive tell into that. So how does it work? Like, yeah, uh, we yeah. don't know anything about we, this. I'm not too yeah. familiar with the pageant circuit. I There's, mean, pageantry is amazing, right? At, at first, when you think about it, it seems superficial and shallow but it's deeper Mm -hmm. than that right it's a lot when you're behind the scenes it's a lot of these girls have some kind of passion they're Mm -hmm. there for and they are standing there for some reason whatever it is right and so they just are trying to 
prove to themselves and elevate themselves. And I, I applaud that because women who begin to explore themselves from within um, for a higher purpose, that's something not a lot of people want to do, right? They are comfortable mm -hmm. not being um, anything more than, they just, they are comfortable where they are, which mm -hmm. is fine. But these women are trying to achieve something more. And the great thing is sometimes when they don't win, they come back the next year. And yeah. so I go there and I'm just like, oh, I'm 32. This is my first pageant ever. These yeah. girls have been in pageants their whole lives. So if you watch pageantry um, online, it's not as glamorous as Miss Universe. It's not all like that, right? right? These are more regional divisions, smaller. So they're in hotel conferences. and But these girls are putting in a lot of work because when I was there, we were up at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. getting ready, and we didn't go to bed until like 11 p.m. And that's wow. a whole week straight yeah. of, you know, getting ready, walking the uh, runway, practicing, and just prepping the entire time, which yeah. is a lot of effort. And yeah. I didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah, it is crazy. Like, And you won Miss Minnesota in what year? 2023. So and you came to Minnesota when? <laughs> 2022. 2022. So she came so ready to take over. <laughs> yeah. yeah so I want to wanna know. Over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Miss California. On, yeah, what's going invading. on in California? Where, like, you just come up here and you just, like, wipe the floor out of everybody else up here. Like, what happened? Um, well, I came here um, and I was dealing with the breakup. So I just okay. wanted a change, right? Yeah. I just wanted to focus on a different goal. Um, I It was a change of environment. So everything was completely different. I had no friends, right? I only yeah. have my family. And... Like up here or down up, there? Up here. Okay, okay. So, and my work, I was working from home, so it wasn't like I, I had, you know, co-workers that I can hang out with or go okay. um, get dinner or drinks with. And so I was like, yeah, let's, um, there was an opportunity for, um, you know, Miss Global, Miss Minnesota Global, and I was like, let's do it. So it's a title at large, and you interview, and then, because so, there's no pageant, and so after the interview, they select... Um, the representation okay. for that state. So I was like, okay, um, this is a goal that is scary, but it's achievable and it's something that I want to put effort into, right? Yeah. And it's been, as a little girl, you've always wanted that tiara. You know, you have yeah. a little girl, right? Yeah. And so oh, they yeah. they are so amazed by it. And so I just remember yeah. wanting to be a pageant queen and I'm like, yeah. all right, let's do it. And and I listened to your Hmong, um, the, when your interview on Hmong TV. You know, one of the things that really struck me was like when you talked about the age group of it. Usually pageants traditionally don't accept anybody over 26. And so this pageant specifically um, yeah. uh, accepted it, older individuals, right? Exactly. So yeah. it's a unique system because it accepts uh, women from 18 to 35. Yeah. And so you can represent the country up until you're 35 and some girls are killing it at like 33 34 yeah. oh, and yeah. and Absolutely. I think it's because these women have a better understanding of themselves right they're more mm -hmm. confident they know who they are and they're able to I guess connect more with the judges mm -hmm. because when you're in that interview room it is scary it's like black the spotlights on you yeah. and you have a panel of judges and they are just all looking at you and you're like yeah. oh my gosh Okay. I, I've been I've been there before, on stage with on the stage, spotlight. Yeah, I mean this guy was a bodybuilder. He was, <laughs> yeah. he went on in, stage with a man thong, yeah. with a man thong, yeah. you and know. Then, uh, so to have everybody in the crowd just like, you know, yeah, I've done, I've done yeah. stuff. I've had it's, it's I've, a scary I've done the stage oh fair with my shirt off too yeah, with yeah, firefighting. Yeah. yeah, it's it is different, right? But but uh, when you're doing it yourself, it's like you're doing it for either a message, a vision, and it's like. And some people like to judge that, right? They're like, oh, my God, you'd go on stage like you, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. You, you're willing to go on stage with a man thong on? <laughs> yeah. Or I get like, that part where you said, like, in the beginning where you're like, it's, from the outside looking in, it looks very superficial. Yeah. But there's so many things that, go, yeah. that get involved, that, that are, like, involved in There's so many moving parts. Well, because you inspire yeah. some people. Across, like, 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 you probably have, like, 80% of the population that doesn't see what you're doing. But you have 10 20% that does like what you're doing and they yeah. want to see somebody that's Hmong, right? This is a Hmong, this is a Southeast Asian podcast, but it's Hmong, a lot of it is, is, and sometimes you just want to see somebody who 
looks like you, talks like you, comes from your background, and that is what gives you the inspiration to say, well, if they can do it, I can do it too. And maybe I can even do it better. And that's great. If you can do it better, do it. Do yeah. it. Yes, By all means, do exactly. it. Show us. Like, show us that you can do it better because I know that for me, I speak it for myself. If somebody can come and do whatever that I've done in my own life and they can come do it better, that's a piece of pride for me. It ain't no competition. Yeah. It's fucking exactly. pride. Yeah. If you can come and do it better than me, I'm going to be happy yeah. that my mom community can do it better than me. And too, you know? like... I. Like I think, what what I'm realizing now is like there's room for everybody. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's there's space for everybody to come in, yeah. and uh, you know I think there I think we grew up in this um, uh, what do they call that like this famine. Um, yeah, like scarcity, the, scarcity mindset. Yeah, yeah, right? the, the scarcity, scarcity mindset. mindset yeah. We're all kind of picking at the same no. thing, but the reality there's is a lot like, of room. there's a lot of money flowing there's around. A there's room. a lot of there's room for everybody to come in and succeed and do their thing. Absolutely. Uh, all right. So back to your pageantry, <laughs> though. Sorry. Um, no, so. I love where this conversation is flowing because, yeah, you know, you're talking about representation. And for the Hmong people, we came here, what, in the 80s? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so if, to look back at it, like we have come very far in a short amount mm -hmm, of time, mm -hmm. right? And that's because we are so inspired through tales of the people before us. Right. And that's mm -hmm. how we keep mm -hmm. our our culture moving forward, right? We're just like, oh, did you hear this person's doing this? Right. And you're like, oh, okay, wait. You know, I love a little bit of competition where right. it's like, it's it's not just about, you know, being better than your neighbor or that person, that other person or that, you know, it's about how can I be better to keep moving forward and to yeah. inspire others after me. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, like you said, uh, if you can do it better, please. And I will even help you. Like, this yeah, is right, what right, I right, learned yeah. from it. Right. And going into it, this is what you need to be aware of it. Because yeah. I'm not here to push anyone down. I'm just like, you know, I have been there where it's like, you're in the dark. You don't know where you're navigating. Because, again, our people just came here in the 80s. And so we don't have people to guide us. And as pioneers, it's like, shit, I don't know what I'm doing. Just yeah. mm -hmm. if, if you need help. Let me help you. And that's something sure. that we also got to talk about because I think a lot of people, when you don't know what the struggle that somebody else has gone through to get to where they are, sometimes it's easier to judge to say that it was easy or whatever because you don't know. But my favorite thing is when I see somebody doing something that other people haven't done, but then the person doing it has the um, enough, um, they're, they're, they're grounded enough to also be open to like sharing the downside and the upsides, right? Yeah. And so when you do that, then you can, then then it, it, it normalizes like just that, the, the whole experience for everybody. And so like little girls who, who like, like I hope that with what you do, when I look at, <laughs> look at it, like he has girls. I don't have any kids. He has <laughs> yeah. girls. But I wish, I, I hope that what it does is that it inspires the little girls to say like, even though this person is like a senior to me, yeah. like I can go talk to that person because they've shown and exposed themselves to yeah. be humble and open. Therefore, um, I'm not afraid to like, if I want to go talk to that person, I could. Yeah. And, 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 and so it's so like, we don't write the status. Instead, we like drop the status. Exactly. And we say like, hey, we're just like you doing, we're just, we're just on a quest. And yeah. so can you, you know, you can be on your quest too. Exactly. And it's all good. Exactly. And yeah, one of my favorite appearances was, um, so I went back to Merced to visit family and Merced, again, predominantly Hmong. So I went to the school and the little girls, they were around like four mm -hmm. or five. They were oh. so cute. Oh. And they were just like, you're so cute. I'm just like, no girl, you yeah, are yeah, so yeah. cute. You are adorable. And all they wanted to do was like sit around me and yeah. hug me. And I'm just like, you can be here too. And I was like, I came from Merced. Like, this yeah. this right. could be you one day or even better, right? And I'm just like, I hope you take this today and continue aspiring to grow more than where you are. You know, don't ever settle. Yeah. And yeah. It's, that, that's so huge because, like, sometimes, like, when we're – in it, we don't realize the impact that we're making. Right. The to representation, you yeah, we don't re um, we don't realize the representation like, that we actually are creating in the path that we're making. Yeah, and, and because sometimes we don't want to, it's almost like if you if if you want to be humble enough, you don't want to think about it like that. But at some point, you have to assume the position and say, "Hey, look, yeah. this is where I'm at," and 
Other people are telling me, I don't believe it. Because because when you're in your own shoes, you don't believe that. You're just living imposter life. Imposter right? syndrome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. exactly. Oh, imposter syndrome, exactly. Yeah. So you don't think of it like that. But then when enough people tell you, at some point, you have to like step outside of yourself, look at yourself from like an outside perspective and say, okay, maybe that is what I am. And maybe me assuming that position is not me being full of myself. All it is is just me assuming my role that I'm... I'm 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 just like I'm making a little chapter for our community to go yeah. larger above it, and and uh, and and it's good that we're doing it, and and I can't wait to see. Uh, we always talk about this because we always talk about Hmong culture, but I can't wait to see like what the next generations do because it's right. it's only gonna get larger and crazier right. and, yeah. and, and they're bigger. Gonna, they're gonna do more things. They're gonna do more like, things, man. Yeah. They're gonna yes. make us look. Yeah. They're gonna make us look like we're petty at some right. point. Yes. Right. And like like I think when you competed, like I definitely showed your. Your, your pictures to my daughter. Yes. You know, similar to, like, when Sumi com yeah, competed right, right, at the right. world yes. stage, like, it's so important to, to show and them you that. You gotta see it. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, and, and to see, like, and it's so important to see somebody that looks like mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. uh, just on a national stage, world stage, just to kind of show that you can, you, that it can be done. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just because like sometimes breaking down those barriers are is the is the most difficult thing. Yeah. You yeah. know, being the first of something is tough sometimes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think like one of the things we need to do as, you know, these pioneers is to own it because at growing up that's, as small right. people, own we it. are yeah, taught to be us. so humble, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, uh, don't be too um, outrageous with like don't be showy offy, you know, and your parents are like yeah. you know yeah. and yeah. it's like yeah. okay but now as adults we're like oh maybe i need to be humble and it's like no because if you look at me got people look at them yeah. own their okay yes. not to talk it's, shit oh, sorry no. trump supporters if no. trump can be president love trump dog <laughs> yeah <laughs> he is a farmer though no, but I'm, I'm just he kidding. is a conservative <laughs> guy trump daddy no, no. Yeah, but if you know this man has no uh political background he's a businessman mm -hmm. think yeah. about it like that right Arnold Schwarzenegger, he is an actor. He comes yeah. in, he's governor of California, yeah. right? Yeah. Step into that role that you wanna be because I always tell people like, don't wait for tomorrow, just start doing it because that person that you're dreaming to be or that you're hoping to be, you will never be that person unless you start taking action and becoming that person, right? Because if I'm sitting here thinking, I wanna start doing pageantry, and not yeah. doing anything, not taking action, then yeah, I'm going to always want to do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, it doesn't matter how sucky you think you look, it, right. you have no experience, just do it. Because mm -hmm. you know, when you start doing it, you learn from it. Mm -hmm. And I'm all about experience, yeah. like mess up. We're so afraid mm -hmm. to fail because our parents are like, failing is also not an option, yeah. right? And it's like, oh God, okay, I can't do this without failing. So I'm just yeah. not gonna do it at all. Yeah, I love that too because like I, it brings me back to my bodybuilding days. I remember my very first competition. There was like, uh, I was just like this skinny, scrawny little kid, and uh, I took fifth out of five people. But like the whole the experience <laughs> yeah. was amazing, and I met so many great people that I still keep in touch with to this day. Like, but you don't know it until you just do it. Exactly. Yeah, and then it eventually transitioned into something like yeah. way bigger. And you got to make noise, right? That's the thing. Like like what you said, I, I like that you talked about like we're raised to be like, be humble, mm, don't say too much. But here's yeah. the thing. We, I talked with my therapist about right, that right. today. Yeah. <laughs> if we were in that, okay, I'll speak from my experience. If we were in a country where that was still the way it worked, then yes. Mm -hmm. But we are in a country where making noise is almost respected and almost glamorized and brought up right yeah, yeah. right so so i'm not saying if you do it and you get lost in it that's up to you but if you mm -hmm. do it with the understanding that what you are doing is to bring attention to bring a bigger message into the people in the world then i think it's perfectly fine you're doing it because you understand that that is what gathers attention that mm -hmm. is what gets people centered focused on you and then if your message is pure or, I mean, it doesn't have to be, right? It could be whatever your message is. Right. But if you have that understanding, then in this country, the way it's set up, then in my opinion, that's how you make your your impact across communities, right? Now, if you do that in, I don't know, in Japan or whatever, they're probably gonna be like, this person is like, right. yeah. Maybe more conservative. Yeah, or this person yeah, is yeah. too loud or whatever. Like but they're too boastful, right? Yeah, too yeah. boastful. Yeah. But in this community, in 
in the U.S. being boastful, there are ways to be boastful with keeping uh, respect, keep being humble. Right. There's, that's, that's up to you, what you want to choose. If you want to be boastful and crazy loud, you can do that too. It's yeah. going to come with its own set of repercussions yeah, as well. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you can do it in a way that's positive as well. And, and so that's important for us to speak about because we've all had like a small platform like we gotta let the younger kids know that it's okay to be loud too. Right. Just don't get, you know, just just be aware that you know every action has a reaction. So if you get yeah. a little too exactly. wild with it, yeah. if you get a little too wild with yeah. it, then it Definitely. might it might yeah. it might hurt you. Right. So that's it, a tough balance to, to yeah. know and understand, though. It is a very delicate balance, and you know, like you should be proud of what you're doing mm -hmm. if you are doing it with a purpose and a passion, right? Mm -hmm. And you have a goal. Um, don't just do it, you know, when I first started get, I didn't have Instagram until last year. Yeah. <laughs> so I, a, okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. For, for yeah. the longest time, social media was just not very good for me and I didn't yeah. like, um, just mindlessly scrolling. Okay. So now I intentionally, uh, follow, you know, mental health pages, therapy, all of that, um, better help stuff. And then. So when I first started, I was very reluctant because I was like, oh God, this feels super shallow, superficial, and I don't wanna do it. But now it's it's gotten to a point where it's fun because I have a message that I wanna mm -hmm. share and yeah. I am very passionate about it. And and my sister even said, you know, maybe don't write your post too long. And I'm like, but there's so much to share, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's yeah. true to who I am. Yeah. And I'm going to keep that same energy mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. maybe one day it's going to resonate with somebody. And because I am staying true to my message and my goals, I feel like, yeah, I can keep going. It's not like, oh, I just want to be Insta famous or I want to be a social media influencer. No, it's bigger than that. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, because I've, I've been seeing like the activity on your Instagram, like you've been <laughs> posting every day. I think that I think that's amazing, though. Like, I think we're learning the importance of that, like even starting this yeah. podcast. Like, um, you know, when, uh, when we had Sophia on as a guest, like she was just talking about like, OK, this is how you work the algorithm. And so like learning that uh, and learning how to navigate that as 30 year olds. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're, 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 we're not. No. Yeah. yeah we're yeah. not. We're not Gen X. We're not. No. We're not. Yeah. 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 We're, it's we're hard. Still, we're learning yeah. it too. Yeah. I always we're tell my. I always tell like my friends like I'm a, like I never thought that in my 30s I'd be worried about <laughs> Facebook likes. I'd be so involved yeah. with my with my uh, interactions. But we talked about that yeah. with Sophia too. Like not to get caught up. Like it's easy to get caught up in that. Like yeah. just like yeah. us, right? Yeah. Just like it us. Is. We have a podcast, yeah. right? So when we get more likes, more views. Yeah. Like I'll message you. Hey, did you see that? Our our <laughs> reel right now is hot. You know, yeah. we talk about that, and, and it's a very real thing. And I could see how, like, if you're young, you can get lost in it. We get yeah. lost in it too, yeah. and we're not even that young. Yeah. So it's like, how do you stay humble through that? You know, and but but like you said, as long as you know your message is pure. Um, right. Yeah. But it's a it's a tough line, right? To like have to understand like, am I doing this? out of like genuine authenticity or am I doing this because yeah. maybe I want to push my message some more, right? I teeter that line <laughs> That's so a, much because every line. once in a while I do go, but I need to post every day. Worth but talking then about because it's an honest feeling, right? Yeah. It's an honest every feeling some, that we all cross. Yeah, every once in a while I go, oh, you know, I'm just posting to be posting. Like it's <laughs> yeah, not, now you're, you're posting too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. when you know, right? When you're like, okay, now I, I'm excited to get this out. And I fight with that all the time. Yeah. I'm like, why am I posting this? This has no purpose. Yeah. But it's also, again, like that's the algorithm, right? Yeah. And that's how it That's how works. it works. And yeah, you just have to keep your activity going. That's why I've been posting more frequently. And I'm just like, oh, I don't even know what to post. I don't even have anything yeah. to post. And I'm just like, and I also don't want to set this expectation of this is my life and this is what mm. you guys need to glamorize because right. no it's the, i don't look like that every single day right, i'm right. not behind a camera like yeah. sophia's not doing my makeup every yeah. single yeah, yeah, day yeah. right my hair and i'm just like no most of the time i'm battling through my daily struggles yeah. and i'm just like oh okay now i have to get through this and yeah. i'm just like okay don't, I, it's all fake. I, I, I get that too. Yeah, <laughs> it is like fake. And like sometimes the fun part is portraying that fakeness. Because like every once in a while, it is I'll kind post, of fun, right? It can I, be kind of fun yeah, like sometimes. Because I'll po like I'll ironically post like my dirty hands, like yeah, yeah, holding yeah. like 
my some of my and you probably that put him in the dirt right before the <laughs> picture. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, and it but, be but sure the this. reality is like, or my my wife would tell me, hey, nobody wants to buy your products, especially if you're posting with like dirty hands. But you know, I'm like, hey, I'm a farmer. Yeah, right. Like, this is the reality. There is a fine like, balance in yeah, that yeah, when it does yeah. become your business or like it does like uh, kind of like affect your personal life. Yeah. Like there is a little bit of that, right? Where like you do have to play a little bit of a character, um, yeah. because part of it is business too. Like I mean, I don't know about for pageantry, but like for us, where we have a business too, like part of what we post, it, it is a representation mm. ex- directly of our business. It is a, it is an ad, whether you want to look at it or not. It yeah. is an ad. You when you yeah. post something under your business page, it's an ad. Well, and, I don't care and, how you look at it. And here's the thing for people too, like personally. Uh, it's an ad too because you're portraying. Yeah, you're you, a you're painting or, a picture yeah, of something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're painting a picture of yourself. Uh, yeah. And that's why they. That's why I think so. People, so many people are. Um, but don't we all do that on Facebook these days? Yeah. Isn't that kind of like subtly the thing that yeah. everybody's doing? Yeah. Yes. But I think like to understand that is like sometimes people don't always understand that. They, maybe they post too personal stuff. Maybe right, they post like right. too. Right. You can uh, have some of that. Yeah. yeah. And so then it's like, like don't go there and vent about you know what mm, you're going through in yeah, your relationships. Exactly. Yeah. Because those are things that I've one vent. day you're gonna. I've vented. I've yeah, vented yeah, yeah. before. You, do, you gotta be yeah. careful, dog. But, I've but vented you're, before. You don't want it to be like no, no. one day I've it's used before. against you, and yeah, you're yes, like, absolutely. oh my god. And and there's a difference between being honest and authentic and then just venting or just putting business out. Right. Sometimes like you put it's your business personal. out. You yeah, know what yeah, business yeah. I got to start? I got to start a business where I am your checker before you hit yeah, that yeah, post. Yeah, yeah. Before you hit the post, send it to me. Send I'll it to read two, it. And two, I'll be two, like, all right, that's good. You can post yeah. that one. Is that this was... politically correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah but yeah, you yeah. almost need that, especially once you have following. Especially once you have yeah. following. You have like... When, before I post something, I always sit back before I hit post and just look at it and read it. And then I have to like put myself in like all the different shoes that I could be reading it, right? Yeah. Uh, then, right now I'm reading as a right winger. Now I'm a left winger. Now I'm a uh, LGBTQ. Like I'm just I have to look at every single shoe before I actually hit post to make sure that I don't offend anybody. So some people would say that that loses authenticity. But today you get burned so fast. And so yeah. now I'm gonna go to this because we talked about this. You you just went on Paymo TV, right? That was on Paymo TV, oh, right? Yes. yes. And so we were just talking about this because oh, yeah. you spoke English through the through yes. the through the and interview, I have right? So much to say. Yes. And so you caught a lot of heat from the Hmong community who or whoever was watching it, yeah. Hmong community, of course, because you didn't speak Hmong through that. So so tell us about that. Like, how does it feel to be the person on the on the other side of the interview who's talking? You're just being yourself. You're you're really not even. You're probably not even thinking about. I mean, maybe we're thinking about it because we all know that the judgment's coming. Right. Right. So, but. But, like, how does it feel to just have your own Hmong community sometimes to, like, they, they, they're so quick to bash about about things like, oh, my God, that person doesn't speak Hmong. Like, it, it's almost like whatever we do, it never fits everybody's shoes, right? Like, wh- how did it feel like to you? Because you're the one that was in the interview. You're the one that saw the comments about yeah. you. Right? And, and it was definitely expected because... So I, you knew, right? I knew okay. already. Okay, okay. And <laughs> I speak Monglish, right? And I'm yeah, not yeah, about right, to right. go there. And not know how to say a word yeah. and just be like mess up the whole thing because i know if i try to speak Hmong, i will try you to get, i will get up, right? more nervous yeah, yeah, than right. you know taking um a bashing later in the comments yeah. just because i don't speak Hmong. and one of the things i i emphasize on is like just because i didn't speak Hmong doesn't mean i don't understand because it doesn't take away from my Hmongness, mm-hmm. right? right i still understand Hmong. i know how to read Hmong. i know how to write in Hmong. All of that, I just am not conversational in Hmong. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that's a big, pla- and that's yeah. a big platform, too. Yeah. That's a big platform. If I went yeah. on that platform, too, you, I mean, shoot, you wouldn't <laughs> catch me doing that. Like, my Hmong is terrible. I grew exactly. up in France. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Here, no. In yeah. this time, it, this time, this age, that's the reason to go. It's yeah. Because yeah. just to get more interactions, more traction. Yeah. And, and just go there and speak English only. Yeah, and I th- guess, and, like, I had a message, right? Yeah. And it's like, Okay, um, if the only thing that you want to bash on is that I'm not speaking Hmong, you're completely missing the message. Yeah. And the message yeah. is, we all have mental health that we need to take care of. It doesn't mean you're, right. you have mental illness. It just means that you have to, once in a while, just like you go get a physical, check in with mm-hmm. your mental health, you know? Yeah. Like, how, where are you? You don't have to see a professional. You just have to check in with yourself. Where am I? Am I okay? Because 
as Hmong people, we don't talk about depression, anxiety, right. all these mental health illnesses that are so predominant in our culture because our parents and our our ancestors suffered war, right? We don't right. have a country. We are yeah. nomads that um, immigrated from Siberia to China mm -hmm. and yeah. all over. And it's like, okay, that's a lot of trauma that is passed yeah. down mm -hmm. through generations. And there's even science behind it where trauma gets passed down and mental illnesses get passed down just as physical diseases can get passed down. And it's crazy. Yeah. So I'm just like, we, there's a message and yeah. and and I absolutely love that message. Like I'm in therapy now, duly too, partly because of this podcast. I think <laughs> er, earlier on, like in our first couple episodes, we talked about it a lot. Yeah, yeah. But um, like before before moving on, I do want to put this message out too. Like, come on, if you're bashing on somebody doing their thing, trying to do something positive, you should probably yeah, seek no, help. I mean, I'll you should <laughs> probably yeah. see some. See no, I'll stand up for that know? because like, that's bullshit. Like, uh, because if you don't have the whereabouts to understand that our society is changing as Hmong people, yeah. like that's like you. Are you gonna bash on every Hmong child that's born in America <laughs> two generations down? Because then I, I promise you they're yeah, not speaking Hmong. Hmong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I promise you they won't speak Hmong. So are you saying that two generations from now, a hundred percent? blood Hmong person yeah. is not Hmong enough because they don't speak Hmong. Yeah. Yes. You can only say that because we're only one generation removed or yeah. one and a half, two. Right. But three, four generations, you can't discount it. Would it be better if that person could speak Hmong? Yes. It'd be better if I could speak Hmong too. Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. But hey, you, you we're all different. It's not the reality. Hmong, like, a lot I, I mean, I don't speak any Hmong at all. Yeah, I don't speak any Hmong at all. But but I just think, and that's the difficult part, right? Once you have a platform of some sort, you open because it up you open scrutiny. it up, yeah. yeah, you're open to to scrutiny from uh, from a lot of uh, from a, a lot of others, and um, I I just want to say I'll personally say it myself, like I said, whoever say somebody might be listening, nobody yeah. be listening, but say hey, it. yo, my Hmong people, <laughs> step your game up and understand that not everybody, yeah. we don't all grow up the same, we don't yeah. all grow up in right. the same places, and we don't. My parents, I never spoke more with my parents one time, and I'm 35 years old, bro. I've yeah. never spoken more to my parents yeah. one time. And you grew and, up in France. And it doesn't and, mean that I have yeah. less pride in being Hmong, man. Right. It just means that I just grew up differently. Yeah. And yeah. But, but people are so quick to judge. And maybe it's the internet, and maybe we take too much uh, weight on it. Yeah. But you have to understand that when you put those heavy words down, um, you're still putting critic down and it, it has can't some hurt. effect. It has some person. effect. Yeah, yeah some absolutely. Effect. So and, and the thing is, I, I don't, t I try not to take anything personally yeah. just yeah. because this is like a complete Buddhist stance on it. It's like, I don't want to allow my ego to take away from the actual message. So, mm -hmm. you know, I do respond yeah. compassionately. Like right. I, I do offer like, Hey, if you if you want to learn more, yeah, we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation where we can speak in Hmong and so you can understand. I'm not going to speak perfectly, so yeah. I don't know how I'm going to explain mental yeah. health to you, right. but I can help find people that can help guide you if you yeah. do have genuine questions and you are curious about this because what I'm out here to do is not to criticize you for criticizing me. Like right. that's yeah, yeah. Completely not. That's we're missing the target at this point. Yeah, yeah, like right, I'm yeah, not gonna right, fight right. on the internet. No, we're just fighting. Uh, yeah, uh, and yeah, it's we're like, just fighting a fight. Yeah. yeah, and it's like no, let's not do that. But I do offer and say, hey, one on one, we can speak in Hmong, and it's gonna be Monglish, but yeah. it's it's there, and no, maybe it'll help me. Improve. No, but to be honest, when I went on the Hmong TV shows, because I went on Fei Hmong and all that sh all that shit too. Like, for, for real, like, I knew that if I spoke Hmong, it probably looked better. But I was like, hell no, I'm speaking Hmong because my okay. Hmong sucks. <laughs> so did you, get, yeah. did exactly you get the same flag, too? Or did you get a little flag? No, I didn't get no... F well... Because you're a man, though. Yeah. You're, maybe. You're, you're maybe. No, it could be. Man. It could yeah, be. Yeah, it could yeah, be, yeah. like, sex in yeah. that way. There, there's a segment of the yeah, internet uh, it population could be. where they hate on But women. But I also, oh, yeah. like, was always Kill confident women. enough to know that, like, I really don't give a shit. Like, if yeah, you want to yeah. think that, exactly. then you're not a type of person that I want to associate with anyway. Yeah. And and that's just my stance, so that I feel comfortable with myself. But, you know, but I, I get it. Like, when I went, when you go on the shows, you know that most <laughs> American-speaking Hmong people or Hmong kids are probably not watching that, right? That's probably yeah. more like a Hmong audience watching exactly. that, right? Mm -hmm. So they're probably expecting to hear Hmong. Yeah, and absolutely. I, and, 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 like, if you go back to my old videos on Fame Hmong TV and you read the comments, people post that all the time, like, oh, it would have been a great interview if they would have, if he would have spoke more Hmong in this yeah. one. And I just look at it, and that's 
it's personal, but to me, when I look at it, I'm like, well, it is sorry. what it is. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. It is how, what it is. Can I ask, like, how do you guys deal with that? Because, like, I would, I, uh, I, I just learned that I'm an extrovert, so I just draw energy from interactions with people, and like that also also including social media interactions. So like if everyone's dogging on me, I I would imagine like it just. I think it depends to me. what weight. It depends to what weight because yeah. I like to always say that like I'm strong enough to not really care, yeah. but I think I'm lying because honestly, if the weight was enough, like, like uh, I'm, I'm gonna bring up one of my buddies. Shout, yeah, right. <laughs> He, he's been having his thing at the state fair and a lot of people are yeah. talking crap about it. Oh, he has uh, a lot of... Chef. Yeah, chef, yes, chef, yes, chef, right. Yeah. So he's got a lot so, of weight behind yeah. it, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of weight. So I think that I like to say that I'm so confident in myself and not to boast, it's just to be honest, yeah. I'm confident enough that it's not going to bother me. But I think there's a certain amount of time, there's a time when the weight is large enough that it will impact you. And then it yeah. comes back down to mental health. Like... Sometimes the weight will be big enough. Mine was just two, three comments, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I can live with two, three comments. Yeah. Yours was probably more than my, than, than even yeah. mine. But can you imagine an entire Hmong community going against you? Um, I mean, I don't know. I've been, do I haven't been there. Them, I've not know. been there. Yeah. But yeah. I can, I, I'm sure it's not easy. Yeah. So I guess, how have you been dealing with it? And like, how have you? Yeah. How do you deal with, with yeah, that? Again, because it's. You know, I, I feel like I know every time I'm presenting myself in front of an audience, I'm bringing 100% my me, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not holding back from myself. I'm not trying to be anybody else. And so I try to allow my ego to dissolve and put my myself in their shoes, right? And be like, okay, I understand where you're coming from. And this is, like, I can't, I can't help that you don't like what I showed or whatever however you see me that's how you see me and it it takes practice to understand that like yeah maybe it's not about me like so it's kind of like just trying to understand what that other person is Mm -hmm. trying to say you know and again it's like okay you have a lot of criticism what is this criticism about because if it's true then maybe you can fix it if it's not true let it roll off the back yeah. because yeah, yeah. it's not worth But it, that can yeah. be hard on different days, right? It can There's be. There's yeah. different days. Oh. Some Absolutely. days your, your emotions are different based on which day you wake up, which shoe you put on that day. Absolutely. And, so, and, and, and it sounds like, like I, as I'm listening to us talk about this, it sounds like we're bashing all the people that talk shit about like anything online. Oh, we are. No, uh, yeah, no, no, no <laughs> we just kidding. Have, we have, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, we yeah, absolutely yeah, are, yeah. but it's, it's also to say that like, you know. Your words impact. The person. Your words can impact yeah. people. And so That's, just for us Hmong people, let's be mindful that I think everybody's just doing their own life and doing what exactly. they do. So yeah. let's just be open to understanding. Maybe you're not under that knife, but maybe one, what if you were under the knife? Learn to be in somebody else's shoe yes. before you talk shit. Now, if you want to talk shit just because you're bored, I get that okay. too. Drama, I get that right? too. Yeah, I get that too. But like, it would be great. And this is just me daydreaming that the Hmong community would not do that as much. That's me daydreaming yeah. Absolutely. that the Hmong community wouldn't do that. But yeah. as we know, trolling is common stance. Yeah. Trolling is normal. It's, it's trolling part is of, part of life these yeah. days. Yeah. yeah. So. And I, if you make it funny, it's just like, whatever, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So, so are you able Mercury, to laugh at like some of those Oh yeah, I right. laugh yeah. a okay. lot okay. at every, I laugh at myself and that's okay. the thing. Like I love to laugh at myself. Yeah. It's. Not to say I'm the funniest person, but the shit that happens to me, I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't yeah. believe that was me that that happened to. Because yeah. if I were looking at the things happening to me in third person, I'd be like, oh, God, ridiculous. Yeah, why yeah. would why would you handle it like that? <laughs> you know, that's great. Yeah. and it sounds like you have a great attitude about it. Like that. That's amazing. I think um, back to your original message, um, if we're wrapped up with this, like, um, you know, you were you went on to kind of talk about mental health. Mm-hmm. I know you're in school. Um, you're in grad school, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, working on your master's degree to kind of uh, be a, a therapist, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, talk a little bit more about that because like that that was the main message, and I think <laughs> some of that like took away from that. It, it even took us away from that, right? Yeah, we we, like, we yeah. get carried away yeah, about that. Like, I think like your overall something message. I wanted to talk about. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, 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 no,
Let's go back I to the original that. message. Yeah. Yeah, because like I think your original message is beautiful, and I think it's it hits home with so many people. I was just saying, like, uh, you know, I've been I've I've been actively mm-hmm. in therapy, and I've yeah. been, seen, been talking to my therapist uh, probably like once once a week for the past like couple months. Partly yeah. because due to this podcast, partly because of uh, you know my wife's been really encouraging me to kind of just kind of to be, be enrolled in it. And I would say like, it's been so helpful. Uh, but like, and so I'd love your message and the, and to have a platform and to spread a message of, hey, self-love, self-care. I think that's, that's so great. Like, so talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so uh, therapy is so important, right? And I didn't realize the emphasis of how important it was because again, being Hmong, that was not something, it was a luxury to talk about your feelings. Right, mm-hmm. and your your parents are ready to just wake up and t- take care of you and just move on with the day. And they are raising us just to survive. And that's nothing, they are raised based on how they were raised, right? right? And so they yeah. don't have time to talk about our feelings. Yeah. And um, for 30 years, when did I first see a therapist? Actually, um, so the first time I saw a therapist was after my college um, breakup and I was like so distraught by the breakup that I went to therapy for the first time. And I, people are afraid to be vulnerable, right? And we hate showing that we're sad or whatever. So I went to see the therapist and I was like, she's like, so tell me why you're here. And I was like, oh, nothing. And I'm just like, I can't believe I just completely denied my whole reality Mm -hmm. and all of that. And that's because it's so deeply rooted in us to shove down your Mm -hmm. feelings and Mm -hmm. not talk about it. Because when you're crying, your parents are like, why are you crying? There's no reason for you to be crying, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't fall. You're not hurt. And it's like, sometimes I'm just sad. And so when I got diagnosed with depression and anxiety, um, it just opened up this whole world of understanding and I was like, wow, how many other people are suffering in silence? How many people don't know that they have mm-hmm. depression or anxiety or ADHD or whatever, right? And so uh, after seeing my therapist, I just was really inspired to go into mental health and therapy my, or the grad program myself. So I am learning so much and I'm just like, yeah, the Hmong people, we suffered a lot and it's time for us to heal through it and to yeah. start thriving from you know, whatever, we are safe now. And so through our evolution, we have always been on edge, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I I feel like that's why we're so tied into the drama too, because Mm -hmm. if you think about brain function, your brain is wired to want drama. And so when life is boring, you're like, this is boring, but no, it's not. It's very peaceful when you come to that point. It's almost like peaceful is not peaceful enough. We need some, we need some shaking up happening. Yeah, Yeah, no, no, that's a... that's interesting. What, what, what did you go? To, what were you originally going to go to school for? Um, so I was in. I went to one semester of medical school and dropped okay. out. But so after I dropped out, I was completely lost. So I was 26, and from 26 to 30, I didn't yeah. know what I wanted to do. Okay. I was just, you know, job hopping, hoping I would land mm-hmm. in something that I liked. And from job hopping, I learned that, you know, I'm very good at relationship building. Um, I love sales. So that meant like connecting with people, seeing, uh, achieving a similar goal together. And then all of that just transpired into therapy. And I'm like, yeah, it's so important because I'm better at one-on-ones or, you know, smaller group intimate settings, like big groups. You say you're an extrovert. I cannot go out and just be in a crowd forever where I'm just like, okay, I need to go home and just go sit on my couch for yeah. hours and not be around yeah. anybody. I say I'm an <laughs> introvert. My wife would say I'm an extrovert. But, and my therapist would say I'm an extrovert. But yeah, but I say I'm an introvert. But yeah. yeah and on. that's yeah. one of the things you learn in therapy, right? Yeah. Because this professional is not, <clears throat> it's not like the typical place where you see on TV where you're laying on a couch and the therapist is like, what do yeah. you see? What are you thinking? No, you're actually going there to achieve a goal to understand yourself better right and so that's why i think it's so important because yeah we all need to understand ourselves better because who are you what do you like we are conditioned to think a certain way right and growing up you're not allowed to challenge your parents because they're like don't argue with me i'm the adult Mm -hmm. but now you are the adult and you're like why do i still have questions yeah yeah (laughs) 
Because they were never answered. We were yeah. Younger. Yeah. We just, and we it, just had to fall in and line. And like, I mean, this yeah. is this is my opinion, but I want to hear if you guys agree with this or not. But I feel like in the Hmong community, we were always told like, I did this, right? I'm talking about the OGs, right? We survived war. We yeah. grew up in refugee camps. So why are you guys complaining? You guys have yeah. everything. Yeah. You have... Yeah. This is this is a common message, right? You guys have everything. You guys have this, and you guys have that, and and that's the that is the lens that I chose to look at life for a long time mm-hmm. until I finally realized. Wait, 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 wait. Break, check that. Yeah. You have problems. That was your problems. Yeah. That was your generation. That was your time. That was your place. Yeah. My time and place is not the same as yours. Yeah. These problems are real too. Yes. These problems yes. are real too. They're not war problems. And I think that's what I battled with as a child or as a teen or as an adult to always compare that like, oh, I don't have to fight. I'm not fleeing yeah. war. I'm not fleeing gunshot wounds and refugee camps. So why am I bitching? Doesn't that make you feel guilty? It, it like- does. But then at some point, the biggest and the best yeah. thing that I did for myself was to realize, wait, 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 hold up, hold up. The, my problems are still problems. Yeah. They're just yes. not the same problems. And, and it's the fact still that valid. It, it's yes. still valid. And the reason and, and the fact that it's not the same as your problems, that's not my fault. I was born in eighty eight. You were you grew up in Vietnam in the seventies. If I was with you at that time, I would have been with you a hundred percent. But I grew up in yeah. the West. So therefore how can I associate with you on that sense? Yeah. And maybe your parents don't understand that. Yeah. But it's our place yeah, to understand it and switch it up yeah I break can, it I, up i can relate to that a lot now as a parent like now like um i do like i am faced with this i this like this dilemma of like okay do i parent like how do i go about parenting right, these right. Things? but the reality is they're in their existence they exist in a totally different yeah, world different than time. i do yeah, a different like, time um, and my parents exist in a totally different world than, than I do. And they're going to, uh, my job as a parent is not to tell them what to do or how to do things, but to equip them with the tools to handle like certain situations. Uh, and, and they're going to be dealing with like so many different things. Like, and the world is going to look different in five yeah, years right, than, it, right, than right. it does today. Like the world is changing so fast. Always changing. And like, that's why even social media, like for me, it's like for, um, I I want them to I want to I want them on social media. I want to give them the tools to learn to how to navigate, navigate social this. media. Yeah. I want them to understand that hey, this is not who you are. This is just social media. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, just social media. Media. it's a sales, right? Yeah, You're it's selling sales something. Tactic. Yeah, yeah. But that's and, the thing, though. Yeah. Some people take social media as real person. Like, yeah, so, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we have businesses and stuff, so we think about that, right? We have mm-hmm. businesses, so we think maybe a little bit like... And, and as you get older, you start to understand that. But when you're 14, do you can you think like that? Is it possible yeah. to think right. like that at 14? No. Because I used to post some crazy that, shit when I was yeah, 16. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. at, at that age, you don't have you're the just life posting experience what you feel. Yeah. to have gone yeah. through it, right? And that's what... I, when I posted my... Um, teenager photos i was like ew this is so cringy yeah, yeah, right yeah. but whatever it just shows you how youthful and dumb and how much how little you know about yourself and the mm-hmm. world and what you think yeah. you like right and so it's okay to get um yeah. you know a little lost in that and it's it's okay to be like oh this is actually fun and i'm getting some kind of gratification but again like you guys both said don't get lost in it where you start mm-hmm personifying somebody else and you start acting like somebody completely different because as teenagers yeah we don't know who we are right we haven't yeah. gone through those life experiences we haven't experienced heartbreak we yeah. haven't experienced right. losses we haven't yeah. experienced um so many other things that you get to experience as you keep growing and learning about yourself so as a teenager i think as a parent i'm not a parent so i can't really say but yeah. i i was a teenager so i understand mm-hmm. If my parents had just allowed me to really, really just be myself and be weird and stop being yeah. like, you need to be like right. this, I yeah. think I would be at a completely different place. I would not be, I, I feel like I would be more confident. And there is, um, what is it? There's a term and it's, oh God, okay, it'll come to me. But um, 
it's like allowing your child to make mistakes because mm -hmm. like you said, you are there to show them like, hey, it's okay for you to mess up. I am your landing place to feel safe, right. to mess up and allow you to mess up. And I will be there for you no matter what, right? Imagine if you had your parents be that compassionate towards you and say, right. whatever you do, if you'd mess up. And we know our parents love us. No matter what we yeah. do and yeah. we mess up, they're gonna be there. But yeah. to they have them best. hear hear them say that, it has so much impact mm -hmm. again, right? Yeah. It's the effect of, hey, I wanted to hear that you would be there for me. And yeah. now, like, you are that adult person to yourself. And yeah. so inner child work is very, very important. And you do that in therapy as well, you know? Yeah. So it's Is just, it ever perfect, though? No. I feel like now, I feel no. like now that we're yeah. going the other way, yeah. like, now it's almost like now that the common talking point now is like, oh, that was too easy on your yeah. kids, right? And so it's like... It always just goes back and forth. Like, yeah. it's generational. It goes back and forth. Like, because now the thing that people do talk about is like, oh, man, now we're too, soft. Now we're too yeah. easy on well, them. Yeah, now I, we're too easy on them. I have a take on, on that, too, man. I think, uh, you know, the analogy is always like, uh, you know, the participation trophy, right? Mm -hmm. Like, in, in this generation of young people, everybody gets a participation tr trophy. And because of that, we're turning them all into sissies or entitled <laughs> people, yeah. right? But the reality of it is, is, is if we want to speak in whole of a, a, a group or um, uh, the reality is we do that because as parents, we didn't get trophies, we were <laughs> losers. And then now like we, tr we project that onto our kids by giving, by giving too many trophies we're overcompensating something mm, mm -hmm. but like yeah like maybe we are giving too many trophies but that's uh that's our fault we're the ones giving it you know like it's always funny when i hear like old people bash on the, on on them but i'm like hey but it's also your generation that are giving them the trophies and like and it and it probably has something something to do with some deep-rooted trauma that you didn't deal with as a kid and now, like, now we're trying to deal with that now. Like, let us deal with that, you know? Yeah. And so I, I hate it any time, like, older generation try to, just, like, shit on, like, Well, younger let generation. me ask you. Yeah. Do you believe in participation trophies? Because you've been a competitor in many different things. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, so you man. do believe in A for effort. Hey, hey. Fifth out of five. I still got that trophy hanging up on my wall. That's a participation. Yeah, maybe fifth, I'm too much a competitor. Because yeah. to me, yeah. I, I don't, like... Fifth out of five, but think about all the work you put in, though. That's true. Yeah. Like, all the work, yeah, yeah. The effort, right? Yeah. The, all of the back, like, for a whole year, I was prepping. So I was meeting <laughs> with true. my coach, yeah. you know, perfecting the walk, um, talk, going over my interview, talking yeah. about it. And that's the thing. People don't see the background. They're like, oh, you went on stage and you walked in, you got a trophy. Yeah. It's like, it is actually more than that. Yeah. Like, trophy or not, I know how much work I put into it. And yeah. I still had the guts to come onto this yeah. stage and put myself out there. Like, yeah. If, and yeah, so I, I, I love rewarding effort, but I don't love rewarding everybody just because you showed up. Yeah. Like, it's not yeah. about that, right? Like, yeah. if you just want an award, yeah. that's, that's not any kind of relief in, like, or success story. Here's, yeah. Here's why I differ. I would reward showing up. Because showing up is the hardest thing to do sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes people don't show up. People don't yeah, show up. No, people can't true. show up to work. Some people people show up can't to show work, up yeah. to class. People can't show up for their significant other. People mm -hmm. can't show that's up for true. their friends. Like showing up. Maybe we do need to reward those people for that show up. For showing up, yeah. Because showing up is half the battle. If you show up, you're going to be all right. People don't. People have interviews that they don't show up to. People have jobs that they don't show up to. Uh Maybe they, maybe, you know, maybe it's time we do reward some of that. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big proponent to that. And so, um, and half the things I've gotten, and I don't, I don't have a lot, but I've gotten because I've shown up. You know, I went to my first, like, you know, in, in high school, I just showed up to football practice on one random day. I just showed up to wrestling practice one random day. I just showed up to the gym one random yeah. day. I just showed up to my bodybuilding competition one random day. Taking action, yeah. right? Yeah. Just showing yeah, up. Taking action, yeah. yeah. So showing, I think showing up, uh, showing up, showing up does count. 
And so I, I think we shouldn't take anything away. Maybe it's over celebrated, maybe, but uh, I don't know. I'm gonna get my kids participation. Yeah, I'm about that. I'm gonna get my kids participation trophies. And That's true. you don't have to give your kids participation trophies, but you're gonna have to pay for their therapy sessions when they That's become true. adults and That's they true. can't so show up to their uh, for their significant <laughs> other. So That's true. Uh, now, anyway. now when you put it yeah, in perspective yeah, yeah, like yeah. that, then yeah. It makes me no, it makes yeah. me laugh because I am trying to like not trying to say that I'm stiff, but I am trying to like adapt that yeah, thinking, yeah. that train of thought. And I'm like, man, when I have children, because I don't, right? But when I do have children, am I gonna want that, or am I gonna yeah. say, nah, man, we gotta be, we gotta be top three, bro? If you yeah. ain't taking medal home, it ain't good enough. <laughs> yeah. But that's because how, but part, think about I'm partially how much like that. that trauma partially. that caused you, like how much that like. It does, but I find that there was qualities in that yeah. as well, like today that like. It pushed you, it right? Pushed to me. have a yeah, goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, and that's why I'm. I'm not saying that I don't disagree or, or agree with it, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> is there is there trauma behind it? I, oh yeah, for yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> for sure. There's trauma behind <laughs> it, but but that is also what drives me. Like every day when I come into work and I run my business, those are the things that drive me. Yeah. And maybe you can say that's like a totally capitalist mindset, but that is what drives me to be like. If you're gonna do this shit, you better do it right and do yeah. it to the best of your abilities to be the best that you can be. Now, I think I have enough uh, understanding of myself to not down talk anybody else that's not doing yeah. that and yeah. that there are people better than me. But I always look at the next competition and say, okay, that's yeah. the next level up, then that's my the competition. Yeah. And that and everybody's different in that, right? Some people are very competitive as opposed to others. So I don't know if there's yeah. trauma in it. There's probably yeah. is some trauma, yeah. clearly, clearly. Yeah. But it's just like, for me, I find it, that it has actually benefited me more than it has right. deceived me. Now, yeah. does it mean that my friends and my family appreciate yeah. it? Probably not that much, because when you're next to people that are really like that, um, it can get annoying, right? Yeah. Somebody who's super competitive, you're like, yo, dude, chill. This ain't a competition yeah, yeah. right now. We're just, we're just playing uh, fucking cornhole here. You ain't yeah. got to kill all of us. Sorry. No, that's, but it's... The lady yeah. earlier yeah. podcast. But, yeah. but then, so, yeah. so there's every, every... I mean, okay, so, so then this brings it back to like some just like stoicism philosophy. Everything comes back to balance at the end yeah. of the day. Personally. Absolutely. Personally, Absolutely. on your own, can you be balanced enough so... Yeah, I but think. But this is a great. This is a great yeah, little okay. like it, you're 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 challenging me, challenging my thoughts, and uh, I think that my wife would be much more on your side and say yeah, that yeah. like, hey, you don't have to be as competitive about everything. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I will stick to my point that being competitive, especially in, especially in this country, it, it, it's benefited me as well to be competitive as opposed to just being like, yeah, I don't need a. Yeah, and I, I think this, that, like, different know? people have different motivating factors, right? Mm -hmm. And some people love a challenge. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. um, yes. there are apps where it's like, okay, if you're set in a challenge, some people take that very seriously. <laughs> yeah. Me, I'm not going to take this mm -hmm. challenge seriously, but I'm going to show up. And with the days that I do show up, yeah. A for effort because yeah. I yeah. showed up. But then yeah. there are the people who take it seriously, right? And those are the people who go a little further with that yeah. Yeah. until you start taking it seriously. Yeah. That, but just showing up is, you know, allowing. I think that does uh, grant reward. Yeah, yeah. it does. Where it's it like, does okay, just being there. Just you're being starting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, showing up is a lot. But then w you get to a point where it's like, okay, just showing up is not enough anymore. It's not rewarding me. It, the dopamine is not right. being yeah. rewarding me anymore. I'm not happy. That's what it is. I'm now, chasing that. Yeah. That dope yeah. The dopamine, <laughs> that dopamine, right? Really so you're chasing the for. reward factor yeah, now. Yeah. And it's like, okay, now you have a different motivating factor. Your motivating factor is to get started, to show up. And when you get to that point, what do you do with it, right? Yeah. Do you go and achieve something else? Do you keep showing up for something else? Yeah. And then... It's like, but some people, like the girls that are in pageantry, they want to take that crown. So they're going to show right. up again next year. Yeah. And there are plenty right. of girls that are yeah. like, I got third this time. I'm going for first. You got to have a little competitive, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, I think maybe we're moving on into too deep of a conversation. But I think the bigger issue in society is people not showing up. Yeah, exactly. nah. no, you're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah. Showing I up think they're, they're, is the ultimate yeah. bare bone requirement <laughs> yeah. 
is to yeah. show up. Because I think there are extremes. Like, yeah, I mean, there I are think extremes. You and I, there are like, all of us, like, yeah, where we is. want to not just show up but exceed. But from, from my world lens, from what I see, <laughs> I see the biggest issue is people just not showing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, no, that that is, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. It exactly. is just showing up, too. Yeah. So just showing the, up is, yeah. there, there is merit in showing yeah. up. To, to to whatever it is to 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 like to to stay true to our topic there is merit to just showing up to a therapy appointment right yeah that takes a lot of to me i'm sorry to say it takes a lot of balls yeah, but it yeah. does like to me for a long time i was like i'm not gonna therapy dude my parents didn't need therapy i can deal I'm with like this i'm not shit. crazy yeah yeah i can yeah, deal yeah. with this shit on my own and yeah. then and then and then some of my buddies were like what what are you what are you talking about dude you run a business so that's <laughs> stressful you're a firefighter. You're seeing dead people. You tell us about it all the time. You, you of all people, need therapy. Yeah. And, and then finally, when I accepted it, I went through with it. Like you said, that's the part where it just took the effort of showing up. And ever since then, I've been a proponent of mental health. Yeah. So, you, you're right. Sometimes just showing up is is, yeah. is is it's 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 even more than I would say more than half the battle. Yeah. Because sometimes half the battle is too easy. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's more than half the battle to actually like. Um, for adults like us to yeah. get in your car, turn your car on, drive yourself to whatever the appointment is and be honest with yourself and just like, you're not going to like what you hear, um, but you showed up and now you you got some feedback from a therapist and maybe you took it for what it was and you grew with it or mm -hmm. maybe you didn't, but at least you tried. Yeah. And so, 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 when, so now when I hear people tell me that they don't like therapy, sometimes I'm like, or like people who, let's say they've never gone, right? Yeah. They never gone. They're like, I don't need that. Like, yeah. like there's some Hmong guys or some Hmong people that are still like that. They're like, I don't yeah. need that. Yeah. They're, they're the to, same guys commenting under Danny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but half the Criticizing, time, criticizing, right? Yeah, 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 half yeah. the time, I want to tell those people, well, just show up. Yeah. And maybe it helps you. Great. But maybe yeah. it doesn't. Great. Whichever. Yeah. I don't care. And not just therapy. Because, Whichever one. Yeah, I don't care. They, but try it. Don't dog it until yep. you exactly show up for yourself. Yeah. Show, show up for, yourself. for your significant others. Show up for your kids. But I guess we can't change all that. So yeah. Yeah. Well, at least we're talking about it. Yeah, yeah at exactly. Least we're talking about it. And, yeah. and that's so participation that's trophies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. I, I'm, I can't afford I'm all, all those trophies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, okay, you, get, too a, many. you get the plot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Go yeah, that's great. Yeah. Keep going. Sorry. Yeah. So then, so we've got to, so, so you, so the pageant thing wasn't always a thing for you then? You no, I, I joined. Well, how did you find out about it? Like, how did you find out about it and just to say, like, okay, I'm going to try that? Um, okay, so there's Miss Global Mong. The Miss Global organization itself is um, an international pageant that hosts, um, you know, their pageant internationally, and so other countries compete. And then, so I came across Miss Global Mong when it first started, and that original one turned out to be a whole scam. So okay. I had already bought all the dresses, you know, I was already prepping and so, so have the other girls. And um, yeah, it just turned out to be a whole scam. It, it was this whole mix up. And I was like, what am I gonna do with all this stuff? You know, you, you've already paid for all right. these dresses, all these lessons, practice all this stuff. And so I was just determined to keep going, you know? And I was like, yeah, even if I don't place, at least I, showed up now when you say miss global mong like what stock competition look like is it just mong like like how do you even enter the miss like how do you find out about it and how do you enter it and how many people are there yeah so now there is a a formal miss global mong organization okay. and okay. it is ran by a different group so the it is legit now and miss global mong currently is going to be competing in Vietnam this year for 2023 for the international title. So the title I went for was Miss Global USA. Miss and okay. so there's Miss Global Hmong now. And it's kind of like when it first started, it was a vision of representing the Hmong people because Hmong people don't have a country, right? right? And so it, we never get to run in these kind of pageants. And there was this opportunity and I thought it was just amazing to get that opportunity to represent the Hmong people on a large international platform. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, this is the first of its kind. And so I definitely applaud the women that are, you know, striving to keep Miss Global Hmong going and putting a vision behind it, a true vision, you know, not just a scam. This yeah. is 
very real. And um, so they are setting up, they are prepping. Uh, I think they have an event coming up as well. They have a few fundraisers. I'm not associated with it, but you know, I do love supporting them and seeing what they're doing and achieving because I believe in it. Mm -hmm. I believe that if you empower other people by being you and showing up and being true to it, then that is a message beyond me, right? right. And that's a message beyond just a pageant. And so, yeah, the, now it's legit, but that's how I got into it. <laughs> so yours says, says Miss Minnesota, is that Miss, what it says? Yes, so I okay. represent the state. And then this past July, I went to compete in Florida for Miss Global USA. So Miss as Global Miss Minnesota USA. Global. Okay. Yeah. And so, like, so when you say Miss, uh, when you say Global, uh, is that like a like is that like an organization and is like multiple of those because i see so many like it's confusing I, I was talking about this with my buddy the other day we went to the state fair and i like looked at a girl and she had one too and so like you, you like and i'm just speaking from an outside perspective like especially a dude right like i don't know any other yeah. stuff so i look and i see many of that right and i'm like well, which is which? Like, it, it's kind of confusing yeah. to to know like what is. I see that that one says Minnesota. That one says Minnesota. Like, uh, and the pageantry just... is huge. There are a bunch of different circuits. So the system that I was in was Miss Global um, International, and or so that's one sector. And then there's Miss Universe, and then there's a yeah. bunch of other pageants. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's different circuits, but. Um, so Miss Global USA and Miss Global Mong are both competing for the title of Miss Global. Okay, so Ms. that's like Global. the complete, like all the countries. And so um, there's like Miss Global Thailand and Miss Global uh, yeah. Venezuela, you know, Miss Global Mexico. And those girls are competing for the title of Miss Global. Okay. Do you think you'll continue competing uh, in this circuit or in the pageantry <sighs> circuit? I feel like... I, I don't know, I'm contemplating, um, but I'm more of a background person. I'm not an onstage person yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. Like I love being in the background, running yeah. the show and you know going back and forth. I'm, the stage is, I've never been an upfront person where I'm like, oh, the spotlight's on me, which is very weird. Cause yeah. now I'm like, oh, okay. I am doing these things. And yeah, but I, I don't know if I want to keep doing it. Okay. Um, but I I am trying to work on bringing you know this on a larger platform for Hmong right. people. So whoever wants to compete, definitely you know that is an opportunity, and mm -hmm. I am open to speaking with anybody about it. And I I, I just think that representation matters. I was the only Hmong, yeah. I was the only Asian person. Yeah, I saw. And I was yeah. like, oh my god, there are no Asians at all, and it's crazy. So. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of like uh, Michelle Yeoh, you know, when her speech at the um, Oscars, right? Mm -hmm. She was yeah. like, to see somebody look like me when you were younger, that is so rare on stage, on TV. And now we are seeing more people like us. And these little girls, these little boys are like, that one day could be me. Mm -hmm. You know, I could be doing this. And it's not just I could be doing that, but allowing them to see the beyond, like, okay, this used to just be a hope, a dream. Like you never, like Beijing Sa, uh, Miss Universe yes. Blouse, mm -hmm. right? That's amazing. She was encouraging. You know, she was in an arranged marriage. She was supposed to get married at like 17, 18, and uh, come to the U.S. But she asked her parents, like, let me pursue my life first. Mm -hmm. And now she's Miss Universe Laos. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. I yeah. Guess I didn't follow that story too much, but yeah. Yeah. Wow, and, that's yeah. It's it's Huge. crazy how when you allow people to pursue their dreams, right. how far they can take it, right? Where you yeah. encourage them and you create this nurturing environment to be like, you know what? Go for it. Shoot for the moon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm all for it. Yeah, and it empowers. At the end of the day, no matter which way we look at it and how, like, whatever areas that we all do our own different things, is that because we look one way, well, then we're inspiring one type of, of people right like we, like i always like to think of like the things that i do is to inspire humans as a whole but no matter which way you want to paint it your mom kids are the ones that are that uh, that that to them is the most relatable when they look at you you yeah. know so so then you grow up and you realize like okay yeah it's true my impact is stronger on my community 
And that's where, like, as I get older, I start to narrow towards my community. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, I would have said, no, I want to impact everybody. Mm -hmm. But as I get older, I realize, no, 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 wait, check it out. You can't impact everybody. But so who can you impact the most? Right. And a lot of times it is your own community. Yeah. To, 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 yeah, no, it's good that that uh, that we're doing that to to just um, like like we said at the very beginning of this podcast is we want to see better. We want to see exactly. farther, exactly. stronger. Not saying that if you don't go that far, nothing nothing against that either. But for those who are motivated, driven to get there, um, do it better than us. Yeah, do it better exactly. Than us. Show and us that it's doable. There's this Inspire one, us. Right? Yeah, there's this one quote, and it says, um, you know, your your um, failures, even if you shoot as far as you want, your failures are some people's successes. Right, right. right? Yeah. And it's like some people want to be where you failed. Right. And so keep going. It's yeah, like yeah. you can only move forward and learn from your mistakes and become better at what you're doing by yeah. making mistakes, experiencing yeah. all of this loss, all this failure, all this trauma, right? right. That's yeah. what makes us grow. Yeah. So. And then um, we recently had Shang on. Shang. Yes, yes, I love her. So she talked about going to uh, New York Fashion Week. Are yes. you going to? I saw you guys. Uh, yeah, so she and... is going with, I think, her team, mm. but I will not be joining them. Um, oh, you okay. Sure? I'm sorry. Yeah. I, thought, I, I saw you guys in a photo, so I just assumed. Oh, no, we just we went to uh, an event together, but oh, okay. I, okay. I love what she's doing as well. We randomly connected on Facebook, yeah. and I was just like, girl, I love what you're doing. Dude, I think you have best. a vision. Yeah. And, you know, I, what I love about her, is she doesn't only directly work with the Hmong community. Yeah. She mm -hmm. branches out mm -hmm. and networks with the whole community of yeah. Minneapolis, you know, St. Paul. And that's, that's so amazing because now you are exposing other people to your culture, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. You're yes. allowing them to come into your world. I'm just yeah. like, that's amazing, girl. I yeah. love it. Yeah. I think I think that's... That's a great part because I think sometimes they, we talk about re representation and we talk about the, doing work in our community, but I think working outside of our community is so important too, just to tell people who we are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Exposure, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I live Exposure. out in the country <laughs> and, uh, you know, like a lot of people are kind of like, why would you do that? You know, there's these types of people out there. Like, why would you put, put yourself out there? But like, in a way, like I, I'm probably their first Hmong, or or like, I my interactions with them is like their first time interacting with mm -hmm. somebody from my background, and so it is important that we go out and outreach. Yeah, yeah. That reminds me of the movie Grand Torino. I don't know yeah. how, if you guys, have, and it's Ugh. like you know Clint Eastwood, <laughs> where he's just yeah. Yeah. gets introduced to Hmong culture, and he is like a blatant racist, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 But then. It's, it is like that, exposing them and showing them the your world and allowing them to ga gain perspective, right? And I think that's where community, it, it does matter, where you're like, okay, we are more than our stereotype. Mm -hmm. And yes. if you have a big enough heart, you do allow them to come in and you see them. And that starts changing your perspective too, because you know, Hmong people are not the most open-minded with other yeah, issues, right? Yeah, and that's yeah, a whole yeah. nother. No. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we don't want to. Oh. Yeah. I have a lot but, to say about that, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 no, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I, I grew up in France around, like, yeah. no Hmong people. So so to me, my first 11 years of life before I moved to St. Paul did not have uh, Hmong in it. So, But it's okay. I don't expect everybody to, to get that. You know, it depends where you grew up, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, I always say, like, if you grew up in the middle of Kentucky and you're Hmong and all your friends are white and you grew up and now you get shit on for not being Hmong enough, well... Like Maybe learn the story of their child behind exactly. how they grew up, right? Exactly. So, um, do we have anything, anything else? Yeah. Um, that we want to talk about? We do this segment okay. called Hmong Anonymous. <laughs> uh, I love it. Are you familiar it. with that page? Yes. I'm always creeping behind. I will yeah. never comment because I don't want people <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, yeah, yeah. to be like, girl, shut up. But yeah. yes, I love it. it yeah. And so, like, uh, we, we've been kind of doing some reacting. So, are you okay if I read? Read something. Yes. How's your reading, by the way? It's, I, I would say it's. He doesn't like his own reading. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's I'm good. very self conscious. About Are you? My okay. And I there's can been read. a couple of times where, like, I've read. I've read it on here and I'm just and, and you know I do like a lot of the editing so then uh, um, it's like a five minute 
segment of me reading word for word, trying to sound out words and sounding like an idiot. You know, I read at like a second grade level. So something for me to kind of deal with and talk to my therapist too about. But uh, insecurity around reading. Yes. Yes. Or just because maybe that's I because just read more. Being an immigrant, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and that helps too. Yeah. But yes, please. Um, but yeah, so uh, I'm gonna give you this one. This was one. I think this was posted. How long is this one? Did you pull up the, uh, the I, I tried, one? I tried, the I tried to possible. grab a shorter one. Yeah, so just just okay. a couple of paragraphs. I'll, I'll have you go ahead and read that. Oh, okay. Oh, so a 19-year marriage, I wasn't ever good enough. I never imagined life without my soul partner, but forever wasn't in the cards for me. No matter what I did, no matter the sacrifices I made, they were all for nothing. My partner started living single while I was the one committed. The moment our marriage ended, he was hooking up with girls half my age and taking them to do all the things I've begged him to do with me. He was probably doing it while we were married. I just didn't know. I was a virgin when I met him. I have never had a boyfriend before him. I loved him and only him my entire life. I never had anyone else sexually. It hurts me so bad that he moved on so easily. I thought about meeting the first guy and hooking up just to try it. Sorry, I'm just like reacting. Yeah, yeah. It, hurts and it makes me so mad that he was my one and only and now he's sharing himself with all these girls all over town and across the state i thought i should just go hoe around town and go sleep with all his Hell friends yeah. as revenge yeah. <laughs> so whenever people see me on the street they'll they will say oh she's so and so's wife and his name will be dragged in the gutter along with me oh my god i love the pettiness of this yeah um Reactions. Yeah, there's a lot of pettiness in that <laughs> message, yeah. but uh, no, I mean I think men go wrong in that. Like I'm gonna go like and 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 we I can t I can choose which side I want to choose right now. But yeah, among men, I think uh, we're not always the best at communication too, and I think that some uh, men in general are not the best at communication, right? And that can go both ways. But sometimes. I mean, there's vices that we all have yeah. as human beings that without communication, and if you don't express your vices, like especially if you're unhappy, right, because everybody's got like a vice that they want to sometimes pursue, maybe it's deep, dark, down inside yeah. on your own. But like if you don't communicate that to your partner and then you actually act on the vice, yeah, then that's what happens, right? You end yeah. up doing shit that you shouldn't be doing, yeah. and then you leave other people in the hurt, just like... Yeah. It and we don't like, even know if that's a true story, right? Because Mung Anonymous is hey, like be. borderline. Yeah, yeah. I take everything on there seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, ooh, But, but yeah, no, says? it's... Uh, um, so it sounds yeah. like, okay, so they married young, mm -hmm. separated. Um, no, he they, got bored and he started doing crazy oh, things. So while they were married. Well, there's, well she's speculating. She suspects so that it was, sounds like a yeah. lot of trauma on both ends, uh, both right? Sides. And the thing is... See, the Hmong community is so big on getting married young mm -hmm. and go, you know, marriage and commitment is such a serious thing. Yeah. At that age, I was not ready to yeah. get married and have kids and start a family, right? I'm 32 and I still don't know yeah. if I'm ready for that big yeah. of a commitment because um, in the Hmong culture, it's so hard to dissolve a marriage, right? It's always yeah, it's they, of, yeah. forever. You shun a lot. Exactly. And especially for women, it's harder because... Um, you know, you are bringing shame to your family and all yeah. that. And so it just sounds like both sides have a lot of trauma. Yeah. And But um, that person, the author, is, it does sound like speculation, right? Where it's, you don't have the hard evidence and maybe you are building up your own story from it. I'm not saying she's wrong, right? Maybe he was shady in the back and during yeah. the marriage. But if you don't know, don't kill yourself over it. Like, yeah. don't don't seek revenge because at the end you're only hurting yourself yeah. trying to right. prove a point trying to prove yeah. like who can move on faster if you are trying to drag his name down along with yours that's already a red flag girl mm. just move on do better but like you said there's something funny about the petty like if that was if that was my cousin i'd be like yeah do it, I, do it. Yes, you know, I love ass. the pettiness. It, yeah. it is super petty, but it's like if that, like let's say, let's say all that was said is true, I'd be like, yeah, you just keep doing that. Yeah, just keep I'd doing be like, that. you know what, go home. I go respect home. that. Keep yes. doing it. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it is funny, but like, I just think uh, 
And 19 is just such a young age. It like, is a I, young I, age. Yeah. I understand, like, me, I married my high school sweetheart. And uh, it's, like, a very, like, it's very unique. And it's, like, doesn't happen very often. Yeah. Um, so I'm fortunate that she was Shinde enough to, like, deal with all <laughs> my BS. Yeah. Uh, but, like, um, yeah, like, who I was at 19 and who I am now is c- completely different. Right. And I think you made a really good point where it's, like, hey, I think this is an opportunity for that girl to really take care of herself and look inwards and figure out what she likes. What, if she wants to explore something sexually, she should do it on her own accords yep. and not to do it in spite of, right, the, right, of, right, yeah. right, right. of the to guy. To discover yeah, yourself. Because yeah, you, yeah. you are still hating him, right? You are still putting so much... And at this point, you are only hurting yourself because he doesn't even know that you're doing yeah. it. He might hear rumors and yeah. all this, but you are dragging yourself. So yeah. go out there, do better, right? right. Like, when, it, from what it sounds like, he's living his best life. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah. go live your best life. Yeah. Like, who cares if he's doing girls half your age? Like, you go do guys yeah. twice I'll, your age. Yeah, go yeah. do that oh, and make yeah. yourself. I don't. I don't know what, but yeah. it's. If you are doing it, make sure it's for you, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And because who knows? As when you know you look back, I think of my relationship, and when it ended, if I had just focused on trying to make him jealous or like you know trying right. to prove a point, like yeah, it goes nowhere. Oh, it's it. I was like, you know what? I'm so focused on myself and where I want to be. I'm going to keep moving forward, and that is going to stay in the past because. I didn't want that, right? I don't want that toxicity anymore. I don't want to be in that place where I feel like shit and it makes you feel like shit, yeah. right? Why would you want to keep dragging yourself through the pain? And so I'm, I applaud And doing the it pettiness. out of spite, like, like yes. let's say that is a real story. Yeah. When you're doing it out of spite, you're doing it with them in mind, right? Yeah. You're doing it with them in mind. So really, still in there yeah, yeah. you're still so. getting hurt over him <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. right you're still doing it to prove a point to that person yeah. so. so the best revenge would be to, to kill it in yeah. life Absolutely. Absolutely. and to be the best freaking person yeah. and then make him mad like i can't believe i left that like yeah. and i think it's that's hard best. though when it you is. are that young i think that uh, oh yeah and we've all yeah. been in those i mean you you're you're a yeah. different story because you guys are still know, together and married. They but separate like, after 19 years. I'm not a 19 yeah, years. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. Maybe but some, but like I know that for me at like oh, 19, no, hopefully not. No. My values were so different yeah. and and Completely. that's probably why I'm not with that girl from right. 19 and yeah. that I actually married my wife when we met at 27 because I felt like my values were a little bit more established. But I'm always yeah. inspired by people like you who can get it done early. Get, get be together for that yeah. long of a time and then adapt with each other that long and not let it yeah. allow it to break y'all because uh, that's exciting strength. You know, a lot of people, when they grow through their mid- early 20s, they're like, yeah, yeah. you're not who I thought no. you were. You I'm know? just a loser. I just couldn't, I just realized you just I couldn't do you just any better. You just didn't want to go back <laughs> yeah, out. I yeah, I just yeah, couldn't you do any better. Back yeah, out. Yeah. No, but I, you do need a, a woman who is very patient too you know or like you do need a partner that is patient and understanding but not to the point where your mental health is affecting you because you should not be patient enough to the point where he is mentally emotionally physically abusing you Mm -hmm. that's when it's time to leave right but if if it's just a little struggle and you're like oh it's no no longer like when we were 19 of course it's no longer like you were 19 You're, you're not 19 anymore so how do you keep this spark going? How do you keep the relationship going, right? And you put emphasis and you work on it, right? right. A relationship. Because no matter where you are, if you are with a partner, the struggle is still going to be there, oh, yeah. right? Yep. You're going to fight. Yep. You're going to argue. But you have history with this, of your high school sweetheart. You've been married for how long now? Well, you asking all the hard <laughs> no, I'm questions. Not, I'm not, yeah, hey, I'm not, <laughs> no, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asking no. for exact numbers. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. what do you yeah, think? Yeah, for, roughly. For a long time. <laughs> right, right. So, so and so yeah. have I, right? And, yeah. and yeah. like, yeah. we have to be honest. You're not married, right, Danny? No. Okay. Yeah. So we have to be honest that being married, I feel like I'm still trying to figure out what my wife wants no, every no. day. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, that, I got to ask, like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> are you all right today like yes. did i do something yes. wrong yeah. like and sometimes it's like sometimes sometimes she he's she's heated sometimes i'm heated for no reason yeah. you know it's just yeah. that we're human beings going through life and that's why we talked about like to bring it all back to person to like therapy i always 
try to do my best for myself because I really do believe that my partner yeah. deserves the best version of myself. Mm-hmm. And but when you're married, you're also gonna get the shitty parts of me, yeah. and that's just part of it. But like we've been married a long time, and I, I'll be Not the first. Not you one. and I, but yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, we yeah. have it, we have it. Although that probably good, that'd, be, that'd, be, that'd, be a, that'd be a hard relationship, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm just, but like. Just to say that it's like it's, it's constant work and like it's yeah. never it never feels any easier. If anything, yeah. it was easiest at the beginning because when I first married, when when the wife and I still got, first got together, literally for a year we didn't argue at all. Yeah. It was like a honeymoon stage that just lasted yeah. a long time, and now it's like no, now we're just human beings, and now yeah. now now it's about effort. How much yeah. do you want to be together? Yeah. You know, and and it's. And, Sometimes and I think about it; it'd be so much easier to give up, but yeah. when and you that, get married, you don't that you don't just do that. Ache. I think I, I realized just in any relationship, there's work. You have That's to put work, work on your end, and they have to put work on their yep. end. Uh, and everybody, like, um, and you have to be able to kind of read people when somebody's not be able to give their side. Like, maybe you got to give a little bit more. My, yeah, in our relationship, my wife definitely gives a lot more. Um, and so props to her because she's a saint. Without her, I'd probably be, I always say, I'd probably be strung out in some alley somewhere. But like um, doing what, you know, every kind of drugs. You ain't gotta whatever tell us. You ain't gotta tell us. You know, whatever I get my what's hands on. Like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What's your bite? Uh, oh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it, it takes work, and um, and uh, you know, I, I kind of went. Um, I spoke on this before, but like, it. You know, I, I like to use the analogy of a, of a friend. Uh, if you have a friend. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't even have to be a significant other, right? Like, I told you, like, a lot, a lot of my friends like to go bowling. Mm-hmm. I fucking hate bowling. But if I care about that relationship and yeah, I do... Yeah, you'll do it, right? At some point, maybe I need to suck it up mm-hmm. and go bowling and mm-hmm. just... And just... Uh, and just Sharing enjoy, a common human experience yeah, whether or not and just, you care yeah, about it or not. Yeah, spend some time with them. And so uh, it, it takes work, and uh, I think... Um, you know, one of the, one of the great parts about being with somebody that's so long is like we've we've grown up with each other. She's yeah. seen mm-hmm. all my downsides, and that's where it helped to be honest with each other. Like throughout the whole throughout the whole yeah. ride, where it's like she's seen me at my worst, she's seen me at my best. We grew up together, like we were teenagers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teenagers, like, like can babies, you imagine? Right? Like, yeah, like can you imagine? Like I was a totally, I was a freaking nut then. Yeah. You know, I wanted to be. I thought I was going to the NFL at, when I met her. Yeah. You know, imagine your daughters marrying the, their high school sweetheart. Oh yeah. my gosh, how would you feel? I would not allow <laughs> it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But uh, I, I would definitely warn her, and hopefully by that time I would have already equipped her with the tools to be yeah. able to kind of speak for herself. The best you can, yeah. right? Yeah, the yeah, best yeah, you can. Yeah. That's exactly. all you can but, do. Uh, yeah, anyways, relationship advice. Danny, you got some relationship advice? Yeah, what's your oh, relationship advice, I'm not advice, even man? in a relationship, yeah, so I okay. can't okay. even okay. comment on it. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I I don't know. Relationships are very complex. They're hard, and, yes. Um, it's funny because uh, where I'm starting to see my, my social media or just my blog navigating towards, it's relationship building. And I want to create you know, teach people how to navigate relationships, not just romantic ones, but platonic and family relationships yeah, yeah, yeah. and relationships with yourself, because that's a relationship in mm-hmm. itself. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'm just like, I'm learning so much about all the complexities mm-hmm. of, you know, sometimes you have tiers of friends, like mm-hmm. this friend, I occasionally catch up with once, once a month, my best friend, I talk to her every day about yeah. the most intimate things going on in my life, right? Same with my family, but that's, uh, creating a place of security and feeling safe of wh- who can I trust with this information. And yeah. so relationships are, gosh, I don't know, complex and romantic yes. ones yeah, are even really are, harder. Yeah. And friends are weird too, because like, I think we talked about in one podcast is like friends is weird because sometimes some like to me, as I get older, some of my best friends, when I think about them, I'm like, well, if they're my best friends, how come I can't tell them everything? And sometimes, sometimes it's like, my best friend, I don't need to tell him everything. I just need to know that you're there, like, mm, at the time when yeah, I need it. And if huge. you're there, that that makes you my best yeah. friend, you know? it's. But mm. then the book or whatever book might right. say, like, well, your friend, you should be able to tell him. No, maybe maybe that's not yeah. it. Maybe maybe, yeah. maybe it's just mutual respect. Yeah. When you're 60, you might have not seen each other for 20 yeah. years, and then you just say, man, I've been thinking about you the last 20 years that you were doing well. Yeah. Me too. 
that yeah. can be your best yeah. friend too, and right? Yeah. You're, you're yes. so right about that because yeah. some of my best friends, yeah, you don't talk as much anymore, ones, man. You change. No. I see them maybe once a year. Yeah, <laughs> and and that's your day one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when we catch up, we catch up. It's like we yeah, never, yeah. we don't miss a beat, and it's all love. It's all yep. hugs. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, exactly. those are my, my, my guys. Those are the only people I speak monk to, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but um, um, before we end, oh, can I shout out this guy, man? Yeah. Um, what is that? Um, Normalized Greatness? Normalized Greatness. There was a, uh, I did a vendor show, right? And there was this, there was this young, young kid. My, uh, there was this young kid. He had a little plastic bin of full of shirts. And he was, like, walking around selling it. And so he, so he said, normalize greatness. And I, I got a chance to talk to him. I bought a shirt from him. Love it. Uh, and so this is his Instagram. Show him some love. It's, um, uh, normalize greatness. And I just thought the message was like, yeah, really, that's cool. Really like cool and pure. And I love the fact that like he was this young kid, like probably 15, 16 year old. Love it. Like he was printing his own shirts and he was walking around the bucket with a bucket full yeah. of shirts trying to sell that. And I just thought that was like extremely like, that like I love the hustle. Yeah, yeah. You know, I sure. love the Gotta grind, respect and that. so I, I respected that so much. So I wanted to give him a shout out. Check him out on Instagram. Um, Normalize greatness. So, uh, but Danny, where can we find? Yeah, you? where can we find you? Where do the people yes. find Danny? Um, so I just started a new website. I'm super excited. Oh. So it, that's where I share very intimate details. More, um, I write a lot. So my blog yeah. has, yeah. you know, stories of just different things that I'm going through, mental health, uh, meditations and things like that. Daniela Tao.com. So D A N I E L A T H A O.com or Instagram, Danny Adele underscore official. All right. <laughs> I like that, and you're we a great writer. Right. Does it have a blue? You. Do you have yeah. the blue check no, mark? No, I don't ah. have. I don't have the blue check mark. But um, when <laughs> I first kidding. started, I was like, oh man, because <laughs> I I had a series of names. I was when I first started Instagram, I wanted it to be just without my face or anything, so I wanted it to mm -hmm. be anonymous, and I just posted very inspirational things. And because I'm Hmong, I was like nomadic warrior. Because yeah. I feel like a lot Ooh, of the like things that. I'm going yeah. through. I like that. So that yeah. name is up for grabs now. <laughs> oh, maybe it's time to change the I'm podcast. about to go take it. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Put that on the shirt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was really cool, right? I do. I do like that. Yeah. So please, if you are yeah. interested in it, take it. I'm all for it. But yeah. Danny but Adele was, that's my fake name. Totally yeah. fake. Yeah. Oh. That's all right. Well, we'll Adele, with, Adele okay. is not my we'll last name. Some it. people think it is, but I'm just okay. like. No, it just happened one day. Yeah. <laughs> we'll but, roll with it. Yeah, but yeah. thank you so much good. for coming. Yeah. Thank it you. was so fun. Like, we appreciate yeah, you coming yeah. here and like, uh, I've seen you on the internet for a while <laughs> within the Hmong community and all that, that stuff. And it's uh, it's good to finally like, it's good to actually like get to meet you. Yeah, no, thank Hear about you. your journey, hear about what your mission is, hear about what you want to put out there in the world. And that's kind of what we try to do in this podcast. Is, and when we get pretty intimate, like I think that sometimes it catches people off guard. But we try to let people know right off the bat that, like, hey, when you come here, we are going to expose. It, it almost feels like a therapy session half yeah, to, yeah. most of the oh, time. Right. Yeah. But but yeah. we like doing that because we want to expose that, like, being Hmong doesn't mean that you're just tough and you're cool and you're, do you're this and you're that. Being Hmong means that you're just a human being that is going through a life experience and that we all share it and that we all have struggles and that we all have success as well. Right. We have yeah. both and we can celebrate both and we can also talk to each other when it's up or when it's down. And this is why we created this podcast yeah. is, you know, we brought a lot of like women into the podcast now, but initially it was just, it was like men conversation, but it's so important to also bring our Hmong women yeah. into the conversation to, to share what they think too. And to just know that Hmong is man, woman, young, old, different industries, different ambitions. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's all Hmong. And I think us carrying these conversations, like we said, at the very beginning of the podcast, it could be one person listening, two people, a hundred. doesn't matter to us as long as we put the message out there and that it, if it catches anybody's and that they learn from it, then I think we've done our, our job. Right. That's what I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, so. thank you both so much. This is, I love what you guys are doing, and I love how vulnerable you guys allow people to be and how open because I'm sitting there laughing, listening to you guys talk to your guests, and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. oh, my God, I can't believe they said yeah. that. But that it's yeah. so true, right? So sometimes we have to speak truth into it. So yep. I love yeah. it. Thank you We're just so humans. much. Yeah. Thank, All right. Thank, yeah. Sounds Thanks. good. <laughs> we'll check off. All right. Yep. See you guys. Thank you.